they gave up fourth round pick, fifth round pick to get the 10th overall pick and a seventh rounder from the Jets to ensure that they get the guy they wanted in J.J. McCarthy. Now, I think they really wanted Drake May. The question was, if they can't get May, are they content to take one of the other guys? And I think, you know, the the comments last week from Kevin O'Connell that he's been the quarterback killer. He's been the guy who said, I don't want this guy. I don't want that guy. I just wondered how many of these guys this year, once you get past Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, how many of those guys were okay with Kevin O'Connell? Clearly, McCarthy was one of them. Yeah, and it's interesting because you get J.J. McCarthy and, you know, I talked to Jason Garrett last week and he said one of the things you always have to do when you evaluate these quarterbacks coming out is some of the other quarterbacks you might have in your building, a veteran, whether it was the Giants with Daniel Jones or it's Minnesota with Sam Darnold is, these quarterbacks aren't old enough that you can just say they're just old veterans like a Sam Darnold, but sometimes you have to look back and say, all right, if J.J. McCarthy and Sam Darnold came out in the same draft class, how would we evaluate them when they were coming out as prospects? And you don't know, like Sam Darnold could have been the guy that you said, hey, he has all the tools. We would have taken him over J.J. McCarthy. And I think Minnesota's in a unique position because Sam Darnold's the guy that we spoke about earlier, gets drafted to the Jets and really didn't have a setup where you're like, man, he can go and be successful there. They were a bad team. They had a lot of holes on the team. He comes in. And it just continues. We we were playing them twice a year and nothing really changed. It was just, it it was always bad for the guy. So then he now goes to San Francisco, first at Carolina, and it's like, all right, he looks a little bit better. You're seeing some of those tools that he had coming out. So now you get him and J.J. McCarthy. And if Kevin O'Connell was in love with Drake May and he just was like, hey, you know, I like J.J. McCarthy. or You know, I love him a little bit, but I'm not in love. I think now Minnesota has the opportunity to say, OK, we still have a veteran in Sam Darnold. They can compete. Obviously, J.J. McCarthy, where you drafted him, people are going to want to see him play. But I think if they feel like to start the season, he's not there yet. And Sam Darnold can go out there and win some games. I think they can create this little buzz about, hey, we're going to let him sit a little bit. We're going to, you know, bring him along. But if they fall in love and Sam Darnold is able to showcase those skills, then it helps you. It, it helps you make those decisions. So I'm very interested to see because I do think, I do think, I think Kevin O'Connell, obviously his relationship, him and Gerard Mayo were drafting the same year. I think he put that call in. I think Minnesota ultimately was like, hey, we don't want to give up so much of our franchise. You know, New England's the number three pick. They haven't had the number three pick in years. I don't know if they've ever had the number three pick. So I think for them, it was like, only way we get out of this pick is if you give us, yeah, those two first round picks sound good, but how about Darisol or how about uh, Justin Jefferson? And I, there's no way Minnesota's going to do that. So I do wonder, like you mentioned, how much they love J.J. McCarthy, but I think they feel good about this quarterback room with Kevin O'Connell, that either guy that plays, he can coach them up and he can get them in the right situation, make the right plays out there to be a good football team. And I think J.J. McCarthy, his ability to run a little bit too, will help him when he gets out there and if he has to play. The Sam Darnold angle is very interesting because he still does have what's regarded as a high-end skill set. The 49ers loved him. He didn't get a chance to play last year. At one point, it looked like he was going to because Brock Purdy got a concussion in that Mm -hmm. Monday night loss to the Vikings. He turned it around somehow and got cleared to play. Six days later, they lost at home to the Bengals, but it was never Darnold on the field. Two years ago, when there was talk about Kenny Pickett possibly going to the Panthers, they ended up drafting Matt Corral that year, and he's in the UFL now. But one of Sims' points was, you know, when Kenny Pickett shows up for offseason workouts, and he starts throwing the ball, and Darnold starts throwing the ball, everybody's going to say Darnold's better. And so that's the the challenge for J.J. McCarthy. He's got to come out there, and he's got to prove to his teammates eventually, Mm -hmm. if not sooner, that he is better than Sam Darnold. Until then, they've got a guy in Sam Darnold that can can run the offense. And, hey, Nick Mullins had 400 passing yards in Kevin O'Connell's offense last year. Nick Mullins. So (laughs) it's going to be, you know, good problem to have, I guess, If Darnold is getting it done and winning games and McCarthy is getting himself seasoned. But, you know, as I say with all these guys, and this is why the Falcons approach kind of defies modern logic. If you think enough of a player to make him a top 10 pick in this day and age, get him on the field. Don't put him on ice. 
Otherwise, take somebody else who's going to be out there and play it right now because it is a right now league. It is a not build for the future league. It is right now, right now, right now. And we'll see what the Vikings do right now between Darnold and McCarthy. Let's hear from Kevin O'Connell from last night after they took J.J. McCarthy, 10th overall, on what stood out to him during the time he spent before the draft with the former Michigan quarterback. Ultimately, being able to see him kind of take information directly from me um, in an install setting and, and see him take it out to the field was, was uh, you know, really, really encouraging, uh, you know, for what that may mean for his development and, and the process that now we get to go through together. And um, I, I think uh, throughout the, these last few weeks here, you know, you build relationships with uh, some of these guys and absolutely did so with J.J. and um, I know he wanted, really wanted to be a Minnesota Viking, and um, I know there's, you know, hopefully as excited as our fans are, they, you know, they can know that J.J. McCarthy really wanted to be a Minnesota Viking, and he cannot wait to get here and get to work. That's one of the great realities of the draft. They all say the right thing because they have to. You don't want to alienate the entire fan base, but you can tell by some of the reactions and the way they say it. Just like with Jaden Daniels saying, I'm happy to go wherever I'm picked. That's code for, man, I really wish the commander oh. would take me, but there's not a damn thing I can do about it because I want those fans to buy my jerseys. So, yep. and I'm stuck. I got no other option unless I sit out the whole year and re enter the draft. <laughs> So if it's true that J.J. McCarthy really wants to be a Minnesota Viking, that's a plus. And whatever his ceiling is, and nobody ever knows what a guy's ceiling is going to be when they come out of college because you went through the transition. You go from college-level competition to the best of the best that college football has had to offer for the past 10 years as honed by competition against each other all the time. You've nope. really got to step it up to hit that high ceiling, and we'll find out whether or not he does it. But whatever it is, Whatever that limit is for J.J. McCarthy, he's going to get there with Kevin O'Connell. And I think exactly what you said is true. You're now taking whatever you did in college. And for some of these guys who were in college for a while, you're now 23, 22 years old, and you're competing against some of these guys who are going to be 18, 19. That's not happening anymore. You're in the NFL, and that's the scary thing about a top 10 pick not playing right away because now you're pushing off the time that you get to see, is this guy going to be the guy that we think he is? So if it doesn't happen for two more years, and now you find out that top 10 pick isn't good, now you're like, wow, we wasted a pick. And then it took us now four years or whatever of getting no production for him really to see if he was worthy of that pick. That's a scary feeling. And your fan base hates that. And that's, I think, what everybody has to go against. I know every coach says they don't care about the fan base. They don't care. They only care about what's best. You have to care because your owner cares about that. Your owner cares about people coming to the games and buying jerseys, all that stuff. So I, I do think for Minnesota, they're going to want J.J. McCarthy out there. And I think Kevin O'Connell said it. And I will say this about McCarthy. He did look excited. He looked ready to go when that draft pick came in. No hesitation. He skull clapped right away. I'm sure you were sitting in the living room and, or watching the draft and you're like, yeah, he skull clapped. But you, you being you, was like, well, I don't know if this is a guy for us. So um, <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> but it, it will be. I think <laughs> that excitement helps because most of Washington knows Jaden Daniels probably didn't want to, those stories. Don't come out for no reason that supposedly the agent said he doesn't want to be like that stuff. When it comes out, there's some truth to that, and you know you don't want that, but you understand. Hey, we're gonna pay this kid money to be here. We just want his best, whether he wants to be here or not. We don't really care, um, but I think it does help. I think the energy and everything around McCarthy seems like he wants to be there. And I mean, you see what Kevin O'Connell did from J.J. McCarthy. Should I want to be there too? I want to play for you. You're going to make me look probably a little bit better than what I really am, and I'll take that any day of the week. I would venture any of those guys at the top of the quarterback class this year would have wanted to go there if they could, including yep. Caleb Williams. Yep. Because you have – guy that is going to be there your entire career head coach late 30s he's going to be there for 15 to 20 years especially if you guys are successful together and mm -hmm. you don't have to go through the transition different offense coordinator this year then I do great in that offense yeah. he gets a head coaching job different offense quarter next year got to make the adjustment again eventually you get a guy that can't get it done and oh what's wrong with you you stink now well it's not me it's the offense but you can't come mm -hmm. out and say that McCarthy's not going to have that issue at all. Um, one of the interesting angles, Devin, that came up last night, and Adam Schefter said this 
right around the time the Chargers made their pick at number five. And and the, the, the background to all this is McCarthy really hit the middle of the radar screen for a lot of people once Jim Harbaugh, the former Michigan coach, now the Chargers coach, was on with Colin Coward saying he'll be the first overall pick in the draft. When it's all said and done, J.J. McCarthy will be the first overall pick in the draft. Well, he was off by nine picks, but it it kind of you know injected McCarthy into the upper echelon of the quarterback class and then coaches got involved in reviewing the college film and once they get into the scouting it supplements what the scouts have already done and McCarthy goes up and up and up the Patriots and the Vikings reportedly and I think part of this is let's see how serious Harbaugh really is about McCarthy (laughs) they called up and said hey is Justin Herbert available and it's click oh so yeah (laughs) You love J.J. McCarthy, but you don't love him so much that you would want to draft him for yourself and offload Justin Herbert, which really isn't a surprise. It would have been like a $63 million cap acceleration to trade Justin Herbert because they just paid him last year. But the Patriots and the Vikings, two teams that emerged with quarterbacks, made the phone call. And why wouldn't you at least make the call? Let's just see how serious Jim Harbaugh is about J.J. McCarthy. And that's part of it, too. You know, because if they had hesitated at all or entertained it at all, then he really does believe in J.J. McCarthy. It isn't just doing a favor for his former quarterback and trying to get four quarterbacks off the board in the first four picks. It would have been interesting. If the response would have been, let me talk to the cap guy just to figure out what that would even look like, that would have been interesting if that would have rumored. And, you know, I'm sure they were like, we can't do that because the last thing we ever want is Justin Herbert to think that we even thought about training him. That's the the rumor mill that you have to try to balance. But, yeah, if I'm Minnesota and I'm the Patriots, there's no doubt in my mind I'm calling because Ju- Justin Herbert's a stud. You watch him out there, and it's a clear difference of what he was able to do in the NFL compared to just what McCarthy did in college of being able to throw the ball, move the offense up and down the field, with your arm. So I thought the whole time, and I appreciate Jim Harbaugh, what he did. I think he really does believe in McCarthy. I think he took it to a whole new heights, greatest pro days ever seen, number one overall pick. I think that was a little bit of, I really like this kid, What's what, what, he's, what he's about day in and day out, his leadership, all of those different things. Now, he doesn't have the skill set to be the number one guy, or he's not better than the guy I have here. But I think Harbaugh knew people respect what he sees, what he was able to do coming into San Francisco, winning right away, going to Michigan, ultimately creating a winner and and, uh, winning a national title there. So I think he did. I think he's like, you know, let's ramp this up. And I do. I think overall, when we first kind of ended that college football season, it was like J.J. McCarthy's a winner. He's a good quarterback. You can put him in your system. He'll be able to run the system. But it was like, you know, he's not really a top 10 pick. That's not what you... And then out of nowhere, it was like, this guy might go third. He might go fourth. So I, I say huge shout out to Harbaugh uh, for, for getting all of that kick started, getting it going. Um, but again, I think it all comes back to, I think both of us believe McCarthy will have a chance to have success. Um, and, you know, too bad for, you know, all my New England Patriot people. I would have loved to see Justin Herbert uh, in that New England Patriots jersey. It would have been pretty cool. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.